So my name is Rob Spence, and they call me Iborg. I was nine years old, and I was visiting my grandfather in Ireland, and he's got like a small property, a little farm with cows. And I took his 12-gauge shotgun, I thought this was a good idea, and went to go shoot a pile of cow crap to make it blow up. I thought, you know, good idea. So I was holding the gun totally the wrong way. You're supposed to have the stock here. The stock was back there. And I put my eye against the gun like the cowboys do in the movies. And I'm not sure I locked the gun up completely. And I really didn't know what I was doing. <clears throat> Although pretty, pretty uh, ballsy for a nine-year-old, I think. And <clears throat> the gun damaged my eye quite badly. There was quite a bit of trauma. I almost lost the eye, uh, but the doctors repaired it. Uh, same hospital where my parents met. She's a nurse and he's a doctor from Belfast, so they took good care of me. But they repaired the eye, and, and what ended up happening is by 2007, the eye had deteriorated enough that the doctors told me, Rob, you got to get the eye out. And I was like, okay. Uh, but because by that point, I was a filmmaker uh, making documentary films, I was like, I'm going to put in a eye camera. And also, like, I used to have the Bionic Man doll, or actually action figure, not a doll, when I was a kid. So this was just like a natural thing for me to, to try to do. And because I'm a documentary filmmaker, I'm not afraid to get on the phone and ask around and learn something new and just get, it, get her done. Engineers are very enthused by the Star Trekiness or the Bionic Man-ness of this project. So. I've had a lot of very kind uh, technical support from engineers uh, just giving me a hand because they feel like it's a cool project. The eye is charging right now and that little light tells me that it's charging and I plug it into my laptop so sometimes you'll see me at Starbucks just charging my eye as you do. Um, and you know, it, so I charge it out of the laptop and then these two little pins go in the back of the eye. So then uh, you just pop it in, essentially. Eye board. I just gotta actually turn the eye on, and I do that with a magnet. This is a very strong magnet. And then I have video signal. Now, the question everyone asks me, is this video signal connected to my brain? And no, it is not. Um, this is just a very experimental point of view camera and um, especially as a documentary maker um, I mean you want to talk about point of view this is as human as camera work gets in the same way that some writing is very stream of consciousness so is this point of view camera when I look in somebody's eye I'm really getting their pupil really looking into my, uh, in my case, my lens. By the way, this, this camera eye is sort of like a 90s iMac. You can see the technology inside, but I can paint this to look like a real eye. And then if your goal as a documentary filmmaker is to get a candid conversation, then this is the window to the soul. Uh, little do they know it's, uh, little do they know it's the window to um, YouTube probably. So when I take this and I stand in front of somebody and I go, where do you think this video signal is coming from? And I've got this in my eye. They don't get it. Well, they, they don't believe it eventually. Like, I mean, there's no denying it. I mean, here it is. So there's two reactions. It generally goes like this. That's really cool then a small pause and they go, that's also really creepy. This is the most human part of the body and it is the window to the soul, so to speak. So it feels like a bit of a betrayal of, of the flesh to have a camera where you connect with a person. Like that's, that's how we connect as human beings is looking in each other's eyes. So not only are they not seeing an eye, they realize that that contract, that human contract where you connect with another person is betrayed a little bit because I'm recording it. 
technology is, is fun, you know, and, and I've actually learned a lot of things along the way, project managing this, uh, this, this eye camera thing. And, you know, we, we did very well. I mean, little did I know before I lost my eye, we, I've got one of Time Magazine's best inventions of the year. I never, th I'm crappy at science, you know, I never did any kind of invention, just not me. But a certain love of pop culture and a lot of support from engineers, and, and of course I'm the one most interested in this working, so I kind of learned how to project manage, um, working with a lot of uh, uh, very smart guys. I can keep upgrading, I can make an underwater eye. Um, we're, we're doing another eye right now. Uh, the Martin Ling fella in Scotland is putting together uh, a new eye and the resolution is going to be better, the signal is going to be stronger um, as time goes by. It's a space that I have to play with and technology is going like this. So infrared, um, we're actually making a laser eye, a benign laser, obviously I don't want it to, because I asked, this is the kind of conversation as a, with my engineers, I'm like, guys, won't it burn the back of my eyelid? They're like, no, Rob, no. It's a benign laser. And they're sort of a bit impatient with me sometimes. Of course it won't. Here's the beautiful thing. I can keep upgrading, right? You're just human.